Hello students, today we will be learning about redox reactions. Redox reaction stands for reduction and oxidation reactions. It is a type of chemical reaction that involves the transfer of electrons between two species. First, let us differentiate between reduction and oxidation. So when we say reduction, it is simply the gain of electrons, while oxidation means the loss of electrons. We determine whether a given chemical reaction is a redox reaction by keeping track of the oxidation numbers or oxidation states of the elements involved in the reaction. So this procedure helps us to identify whether the oxidation number changes for any elements involved in the reaction. Now look at the following reaction that occurs when zinc metal is added to a strong acid. Assigning oxidation number to all species in the reaction, we have the following balanced redox reaction. So here, we can see that zinc has an oxidation state of 0. Hydrogen carries a positive 1 charge, making it to a total of 2 since there are two hydrogen ions present in the balanced equation. On the product side, we have a 2 plus for zinc and 0 for hydrogen gas. The oxidation numbers in this reaction show us that the oxidation number of zinc changes from 0 to positive 2, while that of hydrogen changes from positive 1 to 0. In identifying which substances are reduced and oxidized, it is best to set up your redox reactions like this one. This will help you to take into account the changes. And from this redox reaction, we can therefore say that zinc metal undergoes oxidation and is therefore oxidized, while the acid in the form of hydrogen ion undergoes reduction and is therefore reduced. Thus, this is an oxidation-reduction reaction or a redox reaction. As the blue lines show, electrons are transferred from zinc atoms to hydrogen ions. In any redox reaction, both oxidation and reduction must occur. So if one substance is oxidized, another substance must then be reduced. The substance that oxidizes another substance is called an oxidizing agent or the oxidant. And the oxidizing agent acquires electrons from the other substance and so it is um, itself being reduced. On the other hand, a reducing agent or reductant is a substance that gives up electrons, thereby causing another substance to be reduced. The reducing agent is therefore oxidized in the process. So now we have here an example of a balanced redox reaction showing a nickel cadmium battery that uses the principle of redox reaction to generate electricity. So for this reaction, um, let us try to identify which substances are being oxidized and reduced and which is the oxidizing agent or the oxidant and which one is the reducing agent or the reductant. In order for us to do that, we must first assign oxidation states or numbers to all atoms and determine which elements change oxidation states, just like what we did in the previous example. Then we apply the definitions of oxidation and reduction. So now let us begin assigning oxidation states starting with the reactants. Cadmium has zero, nickel is positive four, oxygen is negative two, hydrogen is positive one, and oxygen is again negative two. Now for certain elements, um, we have um, fixed oxidation states or oxidation numbers. Just like for oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen would always um, carry negative 2 as its oxidation state and hydrogen will always have positive 1 as its oxidation state. Now moving on towards the products, cadmium positive 2, oxygen negative 2, hydrogen positive 1, nickel positive 2, oxygen negative 2, and hydrogen positive 1. Now, looking at all this, we can notice that there are some species whose oxidation states remain the same in both the reactants and the product side, while there are some whose oxidation states has changed. These changes are the ones involved in the redox reaction, and these are the ones that we will take into account. So as we can notice, the oxidation state of cadmium increases from 0 to positive 2, and that of nickel decreases from positive 4 to positive 2. Thus, the cadmium atom is oxidized and is therefore the reducing agent. 
Now, the oxidation state of nickel, on the other hand, decreases as nickel-4 oxide is converted into nickel-2 hydroxide. Thus, NiO2 is reduced and is therefore our oxidizing agent. Now that we have understood the basics on reduction and oxidation reactions, we will now be learning how to balance redox reactions. Redox reactions in aqueous solutions are often complicated, which means that it can be difficult to balance their equations by a simple equation. But then, do not forget that whenever we balance any chemical equation, we must always obey the law of conservation of mass. So what will be the difference in balancing a redox reaction from a simple chemical equation? In order to balance redox reactions, the number of electrons lost and gained must be taken into account. So here, we will be examining the method of half reactions, which is a systematic procedure for balancing redox equations. Although oxidation and reduction reactions must take place simultaneously, it is often convenient to consider them as separate processes. So let us consider the oxidation of tin 2 plus by iron 3 plus. So this reaction, it can be considered as consisting of two processes, the oxidation of tin 2 plus and the reduction of iron 3 plus. So now we have these two half reactions. Notice that for the oxidation half reaction, the oxidation state of tin changes from 2 plus to 4 plus. And based from the law of conservation of mass, the charges on both sides of the equation must also be balanced. Therefore, if we have 2 plus on the reactant side and we have 4 plus on the product side, we need to balance it out by adding electrons. Now, for oxidation reactions, electrons are shown on the product side. So here, we will be adding two electrons, making both sides of the equation balanced. Now, for the reduction half reaction, we will also do the same. The reactant side has a total of 6 plus charge since we have two iron 3 plus species. While on the product side, the total charge will be 4 plus. Now, if electrons are added on the product side for oxidation reaction, it will be the opposite for reduction reaction. So in here, we will be adding two electrons on the reacted side to make the charges on both sides 4 plus and therefore equal. Now we can write the net balanced equation. Take a look on our two half reactions. Notice that we have added the same number of electrons for both the oxidation and reduction half reactions, so we can cancel it out therefore leading us to the balanced redox reaction. Now to prove that what we have is the balanced redox reaction, let us take into account whether the charges on both sides of the equation is equal. For the reactant side, we have 2 plus for tin and a total of 6 plus for iron, which sums up to 8 plus as the total charge on the left side of the equation. Now moving on to the product side, we have 4 plus for iron, plus 2 plus for tin, which totals to 8 plus on the right side of the equation. So therefore, both sides are already equal and balanced. So our redox reaction is therefore balanced. Now, let us have a more complicated example of how to balance redox reactions. So for this example, we will consider redox reactions in acidic aqueous solutions. Let us consider the reaction between the permanganate ion and oxalate ion in acidic aqueous solution. In the laboratory, when permanganate ion reacts with an acidified solution of oxalate, the deep purple color of the permanganate ion fades, bubbles of carbon dioxide gas forms, and the solution takes on the pale pink color of the manganese 2+. Now, to complete and balance this redox equation, we must first write the two half reactions. So, we have the permanganate ion being reduced to manganese 2 plus and the oxalate ion being oxidized to carbon dioxide gas. For the next step, which is our step 2, we would be balancing each of the half reactions. And in order for us to do that, we must first balance elements other than hydrogen and oxygen. So, if we would take a look at the first half reaction for the reduction of the permanganate ion to Mn2+, we can see that manganese is already balanced. So, we move towards the next half reaction, which is the oxidation reaction, and in here, carbon is not balanced. Therefore, we add a coefficient of 2 on the product side to make it balanced. 
Next, we balance oxygen by adding water. The permanganate half reaction, as we can see, has four oxygens on the left and none on the right. So to balance this, four oxygen atoms, we add four water molecules on the right. For the oxalate half reaction, both sides have equal number of oxygen, so it will remain as is. Now for the next step, going back to the permanganate half reaction, the eight hydrogen atoms now in the product side coming from the water molecules that we have added a while ago must be balanced by adding eight hydrogen ions to the reactant side. Now there are equal numbers of each type of atom on the two sides of the equation, but the charge still needs to be balanced. For the permanganate half reaction, the charge of the reactants is 8 plus plus negative 1, which is equals to 7 plus, and that of the products is positive 2. For the oxalate half reaction, we have negative 2 for the reactant side and 0 on the products. To balance this, we start with the permanganate by adding 5 electrons to the reactant side. In the oxalate happy action, we have carbon and oxygen balanced. So now, we balance the charge by adding two electrons to the products. Now, we multiply each happy action by an appropriate integer so that the number of electrons gained in one half reaction equals the number of electrons lost in the other. We multiply the permanganate happy action by 2 and the oxalate happy action by 5. After doing that, we now get this new half reactions. Now, we can cancel the number of electrons to give us the balanced redox equation, which is the sum of the balanced half reactions. And now we can check the balanced equation by counting atoms and charges. So there are 16 hydrogen, 2 manganese, 28 oxygen, 10 carbon, a net charge of 4 plus on each side of the equation, which confirms that the equation is correctly balanced. Okay, so that's it, guys, and I hope that you have learned from our discussion about redox and balancing redox reactions. See you guys next time. Enjoy and study well.